All right, prayer. All earthly things with earth will fade away, but prayer grasps eternity. But I'm convinced of this, God does not hear prayer. He hears desperate prayer. Prayer is not a position, whether you need. Prayer is not a position, it's a disposition. You get to the place where you'd rather sweat, you'd rather weep in his presence than laugh in anybody else's presence. You'd rather God whisper a speaking into your heart that breaks you. And somebody give you the prizes that all the world covets. Prayer is almost the greatest human privilege that we have. What up, family? Wow, that is weak. Y'all wake yet? There you go. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate you, Pastor. Pastor. Good to see everybody. I missed y'all last week, man. We was out in Washington, and that's a weird place, but it was, uh, it was a little different over there, and we spent a couple of days in Spokane helping out a church. I don't know. Is it Spokane or Spokane? I call it Spokane. Uh, let's just go with that. Is it pecan or pecan? Pecan? Pecan. Mm, let me get a shout out to all my rednecks. Love my people. Love my people. All right. Is it Spokane or Spokane? That's what I said. Unspoken request. No, no. <laughs> hey, man, we've been in a series on prayer. Didn't Pastor Jimmy do a great job last week? Man, that dude knocked it out the park. I was so proud of him. Keep uh, Pastor Jimmy in, his prayer, in your prayers. The whole Lucero family. Pastor Jimmy's mom's not doing well at all, and, and they're not real sure how much longer she has. So just keep them in prayer. He's in Roswell to be with them today, and we're going to lift them up. But we've been looking um, at the Bible at different ways to pray and different things you can do. And some people say, I didn't know there was more than one way to pray, but there is. There, there, there definitely is. And, and I think we can look at patterns on how to pray, because if we're not careful... And, and I say this because I, I've been here before, and maybe you haven't, but if you're not careful, you'll build a prayer list, and you won't build a prayer life. Uh, does that make sense to everybody? You just have a list, but not really a prayer life. And so we've been using this verse, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Pray in every situation. How many situations? Every. So that means before I send the text message... I already lost the shout. Yeah, I'm not going to pray. I'm just going to send it. I'm going to send it, and then I'm going to ask for forgiveness. That's what I'm doing. So, uh, before you send the text, before you send the email, pray. Use every kind of prayer and request there is. For the same reason, be alert. Use every kind of effort and make every kind of request for all of God's people. And that's God's words translation. And so it amazes me with all the uh, miracles that the disciples got to see Jesus do, all the messages that they heard, all the messages they watched him give, that he comes to them and he says, man, you guys asked me for anything and I'm going to give it to you. And the one thing that they asked him for wasn't based around a miracle or, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't about showmanship. It wasn't about delivery. It wasn't about any of that. It was about, hey, teach us to pray. Teach us how to communicate better with you because I believe that, that they thought this, that if I can learn to prayer, that prayer is the key that opens up the miracles. Prayer is the one that opens up the delivery. Come on, somebody. And prayer is what brings the anointing. And the book of James tells us in chapter 5, therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. Don't confess them and then gossip about each other. Pray for one another. Why? That you may be healed. Because the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And I want to touch on that last part for a minute here and say the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. That you and I can pray a prayer that will absolutely make a difference. That, that God can do something in you and through you that will leave an impact on, you, on, on this world. And, and that word effective means work. That we can pray prayers. I hope somebody gets some confidence. That we can pray prayers that work. Come on, somebody. 
We can pray prayers that work. And I don't know about you, but I want an effective and intended purpose. And, and, and it also means a strong energy. I want to be effective when I pray. Now, we had a hot summer. I don't know how many of y'all pay. If you don't know that it was hot, then you ain't big. <laughs> you ain't big. Big people, we know we had a hot summer. Come on, somebody. And, and, and then there's those, little, there's those people that are like this big around. Oh, it was so hot, Pastor. I, was, I will punch you in the throat. You don't know. <laughs> what, it's hot. I'm, I will steal your fan. You don't get to say it's hot. But when it was so hot, man, I want my air conditioner to be effective. I want that thing to blow cold. I want it to blow hard. When I'm fixing my hair for church, I want my blow dryer to work. Y'all some hateful people in here, that's what I'm going to say. Y'all don't know that I don't use a blow dryer. I have fantasies. <laughs> What's your fantasy, Pastor Todd, to use a blow dryer? <laughs> so I want my blow dryer. I want, listen, I don't know what. I want my ATM card to be effective. Bless God, I want that thing to have some thing to, to, to work. Somebody told me one time, I'm going to get in your account and I'm going to get $5,000. I said, well, hold on. Uh, you're not getting in my account. Um, because I got a lot fitty. So uh, I want to, if I get sick though, I want that person praying for me. Because if you had enough faith to believe I had $5,000, I believe you got kind of faith to move a mountain. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and so, but I want that ATM card to be effective, don't you? I don't want things that are ineffective in my life. I don't ever hear somebody say, man, I love this car. It never starts, but I love it. This is a, man, I, just, I love our house. The roof leaks everywhere, but man, I love this place. I love our shower. I mean, it just barely comes out a drop at a time. There's really no pressure to it, but this shower head, bless God, I love it. So we don't want ineffective things and nobody goes around talking about it. And, and, and so I want the opposite of those things. I, I love this. I, it never works, but I'm so in love with it. I want something in my life that changes things. And James tells us that my prayer will be effective. It can be effective in my marriage. It can be effective in my ministry. It can be effective in my finances and my family and my friends. Every one of these areas, the Bible tells us that we can pray effectively and not only be effective, we can have hope that God can change our situation. If you believe that, give God a good shout of praise, man. Now, there's a story I'm going to take you to in the book of Acts, and you can see things happening because of people's prayer, and, and you see the New Testament church advancing because um, they're, they're praying and, and it's blowing up. So I want to look at one of those stories this morning, and, and I want to say this to somebody. I don't know who you are, but I know when God put this message together, he gave me this one thing. Can I tell you that even in your doubts, that your doubts do not disqualify you or your God from bringing deliverance in your life. And you say, well, that's a good opinion. I'm fixing to give you Bible for it. Would it be okay that if I told you if you had doubts that your God could still move on your behalf? Could I encourage you with that this morning? I'm going to show it to you in this story right here. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. It was about this time that King Herod had arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with a sword. When he saw that this was met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. Now this happened during the festival of unleavened bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, watch this, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Now that word earnestly is the same word that we just read in James that says powerful and effective. So the church is in a prayer meeting praying powerful and effective prayers. I want you to catch this. Peter's in trouble and the church is praying for Peter's deliverance to come about. It says that night, verse six, before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was leaping between two soldiers bound, or sleeping, I'm sorry, was sleeping, but <laughs> leaping, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentry stars, uh, guards stood guard at the entrance. Blah, 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 blah. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Come on, somebody. 
you know you got peace when you're in the jail cell that the guy before you just got stabbed to death. James just got killed by a sword, and you're in the... So I got to think, if I'm in there like, it didn't go too good for James. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep up in here. Come on, somebody. I, I don't know. I'm scared to go. But Peter, he's so much asleep that the angel of God had to wake him up. That's peace. That is peace. And punched him in the side. I like that. Dude. Get up, boy. <laughs> Woke him up. He said, and the chains, watch this, and the chains fell off Peter's wrist. Then the angel said to him, put, put on your clothes and sandals. Now, I didn't pick this up to earlier. Like, Peter not only asleep, he's sleeping naked. <laughs> now, that's real peace right there. I mean, you ain't worried about your fire alarm going off. You're not worried about your kids coming in. You just over there like, in your, <laughs> in your glory. Come on, somebody. That is peace. This that. <laughs> butt naked in jail, that's not a good look. But anyway, he, that's what's going on. And, and Peter did so, it says. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea uh, that what the angel was doing was really happening. That's crazy to me that God's deliverance can be so strong and so quick that you think you're dreaming. That's a good God. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and the second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city, and it opened by itself. How many of you realize that prayer can open gates that you don't know how to open? <laughs> prayer can open doors that you don't know how to open. And they went through it, and when they walked through the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent this angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. Now get this, these people are in a prayer meeting praying for Peter to get out of jail. I just want you to keep that in mind. They are praying for Peter to get out of jail. Peter knocked on the outer entrance, and a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed, she ran back without even opening the door. I can't let you in. We can't harbor fugitives. No, but... <laughs> She gets so excited, she runs back in and, and watch the people in the prayer meeting praying for Peter. Peter's at the door, y'all. Well, I think she's from the south. It don't say that, but <laughs> Peter's from the door. You, look at the church people. You out of your mind. You are out of your mind, they told her. When she kept insisting that it was so, they said, it must be an angel. But Peter kept on knocking. Aren't you glad for persistence? Peter kept on knocking, and when they opened the door, they were astonished. Let me stop here and say this. Thank God that our doubt does not disqualify the delivering power of our God. And I don't know about anybody else, but that helps me because sometimes I don't always believe that the Lord can deliver me to the level of my prayer. But we have a God that can not only take me there, he can do exceedingly abundantly above all I can think or ask. And it doesn't matter about my frailty because God's ear is not deaf and his hand is not shortened that he cannot do what you've asked him to do this morning. I hope that brings courage to somebody. Peter motioned with his hand. Y'all be quiet. So what is this? I'm reading this. In my you got to put yourself in the story. So this makes me happy. Y'all be quiet. And he described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Listen, your mess is God's message. Your test is your testimony. He said, tell James and the other brothers and sisters about this, he said, and then left, another, uh, left for another place. In the morning, there was no small commotion among the soldiers as to what had become of Peter. I want to learn to pray earnest and effective prayers. Why, Todd? Because I want to pray a prayer that will bring freedom into people's lives. I want to be able to pray freedom over somebody. I want to be able to pray miracles over somebody. Do you know that, that, that uh, just this last couple of weeks, we have a, uh, a grandmother that brings her, her granddaughter to church, and the baby's eight months old and was born deaf and, and, and can't hear. They've done two, two, two hearing tests over this child. No hearing there at all. And beautiful baby, just beautiful, but cannot hear. 
but they were going to have to put tubes in her ears just to help with drainage and stuff because they kept clogging. So they put tubes in her ears, and I don't know why they did this, but when they put tubes in the ears, they also did a hearing test. And we had just prayed for the baby a week before, and then when they did the hearing test, that baby can hear 100% now. 100%. And the doctor, the doctor said, I don't know what you're doing, but keep praying because whoever you're praying to is a God that performs miracles. The doctor said that, man. And so we have, we have abilities to pray prayers that will bring healing to people's broken bodies. Come on. And we have prayers that we can pray that will break every chain and heal all of humanity. Amen. So we got to learn how to pray through our unbelief because if we're not careful, it'll stop us right before we get to breakthrough. Well, Pastor Todd, how do we do it? Let me give you a couple things to do. If you're a note taker, here's number one. When there is pressure, this is when you pray a fervent prayer. When there is pressure, prompting, or pain. I believe we learn how to pray effective prayers when there's pressure, prompting, or pain. Psalms 18, David said it this way. In my distress, I called out to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. God hears the cries of his people. And there are times in my life a a problem or pressure will push me to prayer like no other time. Now, I want to be clear. I'm not asking for it. (laughs) I'm not. You don't know. Lord, put a lot of pressure on me so I'll pray better. I'm not asking him to do that. But I am telling you when there is pressure, pressure pushes me to God like nothing else will. It pushes me like nothing else will. And if, if my needs push me to my knees, then glory to God for that blessing of prayer. Come on, somebody. And, and, and could it be, watch this, I want to give you something to think about. Could it be the chaos in your life right now it, it is, is just that. It is something that is trying to prompt you to call upon God and to begin to look to him like you never have before. Then, then, then what do we do? Then we thank God for the chaos. If the chaos is what pushes me to my knees, then I'm going to thank him for the chaos. Rather than, you you ever get mad and and go pave a road with anger? I know nobody here does it. But some, you know, when when you're walking, you're just cursing what you're walking on. We're at the church of the first righteous today. I can see that already. (laughs) Hallelujah. God bless these saints of God. But you, you, man, you'll just be angry and you're walking down the road. You got all this anger and you got all this bitterness coming out of the mouth uh, that you're traveling. And, and, and what would happen if we would pave that road with prayer rather than pain? You, you, so what are you saying, Todd? I'm saying you don't got to like the road your own. You don't got to celebrate it. But you might be amazed at the destination you would end up if you would change your attitude. I'm preaching to myself too. Look, listen, what, what you're going through and how you handle it, listen, it's going to rain. Sooner or later, it's going to rain. But, but, but I don't have to let the rain get on me. Come on, somebody. It, it's, I, I, it's how you go through the rain. Come on, man. It's how you go through the storm. The storms are going to happen. I don't have to let the storm overtake me. I can hold my head up high and recognize this. If God allowed me to go here, it must be he's trying to produce something on the inside of me that I couldn't learn another way. If I didn't get sick, I wouldn't know him as my healer. Come on. If I didn't, my marriage didn't get in a mess, I wouldn't know him as my counselor. I always say, if I didn't get in sometimes in trouble, I wouldn't know him as my lawyer. Are you hearing what I'm telling you this morning? There are some things you go through so you can learn a side of God that you've never known before. So here's another ingredient to prayer. You got to pray with passion. Number two, brother, what you doing on the front row? Oh. <laughs> Welcome to the front row, Chad. How's that? Next week, you'll be on stage. You never know. What would it be like to get a message from an oil field worker? It'd be colorful. (laughs) He said he'd have more people than I do. So (laughs) that's funny, man. I'm glad you're on the front row, man. I thought the miracle was that little girl getting healed, but you being on the front row is a pretty good one too. No, I'm just like, let me get back into this. Pray with passion. That's my brother, y'all, so I can give him a hard time. Hebrews chapter 5 says this, and I guess by now y'all can see who the better looking one is. <laughs> Don't y'all get ugly with me. I'm on stage. Don't you? Here we go. Hebrews 5 says this. During the, <laughs> we all know. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he heard because of his, he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. Man, that's a, I wish I had time to camp on that. Uh. 
Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for anybody who will obey him. God help me to pray with passion. Amen. Here's number three. Pray with persistence. Help me stay persistent even when I don't see the things changing that I'm praying about. Now that's a hard, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a by faith statement, isn't it? Help me stay persistent when I don't see it changing. Even when I don't see the answer that I want. Have you ever prayed for something or somebody and it started getting worse before it got better? Man, that's tough. And, 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 but you got to keep praying. Jonah, look at this. Jonah chapter 2 says this. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. I don't know that it would get a, I don't know a worse place you can play than in the belly of a whale. That had to be stinky. Listen, we went down to that Pike's Market while we were there, and I mean, you, you like out in the parking lot, right, Javi? We're out in the parking lot, and you can smell that fish from eight blocks down. I was like, no, nah, I wouldn't holler. I wouldn't thank the Lord for none of that. I, <laughs> I was just sitting there going, oh, they nasty, and they got to go home smelling like nasty. But since I had my surgery, when I eat too fast, I, 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 this TMI, I realized, but I'll throw up. There ain't nothing in the world worse than throwing up fish. I just learned that this last week. So if throwing it up is anything like being on the inside of it, oh, poor Jonah, bless his heart. I'm, this is a bad place to pray from. But even in the middle of the pray, pain, I've got to keep praying. Even if my surroundings, watch me, even if my surroundings don't line up with where I'm praying from, sometimes I got to prophesy to my situation till it becomes the very thing that I say it is. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Calling those things that are not as though they are. Prophesy over the situation. You got to stay with it. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, neighbor. stay with it. Now, the next one I got is seen all throughout the Bible and and the book of Acts. Effective prayers happen. Here's number four. Pray in partnership with other people. Pray in partnership with other people. Matthew 18. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. Now, that's why we do community groups. That's why we don't do life alone. Come on, somebody. That's why we don't do life alone, so that if I'm drowning, come on, I can reach out to another believer and have them pray God's word over me, because sometimes when I'm in the boat, I don't have the strength to paddle anymore, but I need a friend that'll say, you just stay down and rest, I got you, I'll paddle us all the way back to shore and get you back to where you need to be. We don't do life alone, they pray you back into freedom. Could it be for some of you that it's time for you to begin to stand in agreement for somebody that's broken and wounded? If you've been broken and wounded and you're still alive and the lightning didn't kill you, you may smell like smoke, but the fire didn't catch you. Maybe it's time for you to reach back and take somebody else that's broken and wounded and let them know, I got you. You can make this. I am praying for you. Why, Pastor Todd? Because growing people change and maybe it's time for you to start changing in a different direction and quit seeing yourself as just a church goer and know that you are a God doer. Come on, somebody. What you've done is not who you are that doesn't disqualify you. God will call you to do something and most, most people, their first inclination is try to talk God out of the word he's spoken over their life. Like you've given God information about how shady you are. Lord, maybe you don't know this. I'm pretty sure he does. I guarantee you, God has never woke up and said, oh, myself, I didn't see that happening. Y'all catch that on the way home. Oh, myself, I'm so shocked. I did not see that. So when God decrees a word over my life, even, listen, do you know sometimes God will give you a prophetic word? Got to give you a, a word about somewhere you're going and you can't see it in yourself. And that's the good thing about the continued work of God. Because he that has begun a good work will be faithful to its completion. And so, I, man, there's been so many words spoken over my life that when God gave them, I said, you must have had the wrong person because I don't look like nothing like that word, what you're doing down on me. And the Lord said, the reason you don't look like the word is because you got to walk through these seasons and see you become to I declare That's why you got to go through some of the go-throughs you go through. It's not because God forgives you. It's so you can become the person he's declared you to be. 
so that when you get to the next level, you have everything you need to fight. So we can't, there's some, what am we telling you? There's some situations you don't need to pray yourself out of. You need to pray yourself through. Because if God, let's, it's just like baking cookies. You don't take the cookies out of the oven too early. And it's hard, bless God. When you big, it's hard. Come on, you cooking chocolate chip cookies? Come on, somebody. You in the kitchen just like, oh, Jesus. I'm going to tell you how good God's been. I'm going to tell you how good God's been. The cookie's almost done. The milk is getting cold. I'm going to tell you how good God's been. One more time. No, I'm just like. <laughs> and when they're cooking and you're trying to take them, just don't do that. Don't, they're not ready yet. I got high. I'm bigger than you. I think I know when they're ready to eat. Like, but if you take it out too early, it's not what it should be. So some of us are praying this out of situations that if God took you out too early, you wouldn't develop the way he wants you to develop. It's not that he's forgotten about you. It's that he knows so much about you, he's got to develop you the right way. Am I making sense to anybody? So praying in partnership is important. That's why on Tuesdays we have prayer meeting every Tuesday at the, at the South Campus that you can come and pray with other believers. And here's the last one. And this is really, in my opinion, the most important ingredient to praying effectively, and that's this. Focus on the person of Jesus Christ. Focus on the name of Jesus. Why? Because there's no other name greater than the name of Jesus. I like what it says in John 14, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. What are you telling me? I'm telling you chains fall in the name of Jesus. Doors open in the name of Jesus. People get healed in the name of Jesus. Marriages get saved in the name of Jesus. Nothing is greater than the name of Jesus and the blood of the Lamb. I'm trying to tell you this morning. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, 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 to break every chain. chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. So no matter what you're facing today, no matter what the situation is, I want you to know not only is his name beautiful, his name is powerful. When I'm sick, when I'm sick, it becomes healing. In a dark time, it becomes light. In depression, it becomes a garment of praise. When I'm broken, it comes restoration. He has no rival. He has no equal. He is the name above all names. And what a powerful name. If you believe that, give God a good shout of praise. Come on and stand to your feet. Come on and stand to your feet. Sing this with us. Pray for you today. I got an issue. I need a breakthrough. Come on, let us pray with you.